In this edition of In the Trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics, defensive coordinator Lou Anarumo talks to us about how the Cincinnati Bengals shut down the Pittsburgh Steelers, only allowing 10 points. It started with stopping the run in the AFC North. If you run the football and stop the run, you're going to be in pretty good shape. The Bengals ran it for 198 yards. The Pittsburgh Steelers generated a little bit more than 50. That kind of a disparity will usually go in your favor in this division. Lou Anarumo talks about that and everything else that took place against the Steelers and foreshadows what needs to get done to beat the Chargers. I'm extremely appreciative of First Star Logistics for supporting In the Trenches with Dave Lapham. Now, they want to do something for you. And boy, if you have not taken advantage of this, shame on you. Sweepstakes. All the ways to enter the sweepstakes are right below. And we got some prizes for you. It's right around the holiday season as Santa Claus comes knocking. How about 3000 bucks? $3,000 to go do Christmas shopping, take care of all the family members and friends. That'll work. That'll work big time. What about communicating with family and friends? How about the iPhone 13? Technology at its finest. I don't know if I can take me a while to figure that out, probably. All right, the next prize. Dinner, Jeff Ruby's, the best steakhouse in the area, the best steakhouse in the country. And you can go to Jeff Ruby's with a significant other, wife, whatever the case may be. I'm going to be taking my wife. The four of us go to dinner, enjoy a nice steak at Jeff Ruby's Steakhouse. And then another prize, a signed football, a signed Lapham jersey. How about that? Number 62 in your program <laughs> a long time ago. Um, and also uh, two tickets to a remaining home game. Cincinnati Bengals making that drive to the playoffs, that playoff push. Come one, come all, take advantage. Enter the sweepstakes. Check out how below. You won't regret it. I want to welcome to our podcast once again, defensive coordinator Lou Anarumo and coach. Really appreciate you uh, visiting with us today, coming off the big victory against the Pittsburgh Steelers. What did you like most about that football game, Coach? What did you like most about what your players did in that game? Um, I just think how they uh, approached the week, uh, kind of felt confident going into the game, and, uh, you know, they executed uh, the plan to the T. And, uh, again, just our overall approach I thought was really businesslike last week and, and uh, super proud of the way the guys played and their effort. And it, was, it, was, uh, it, showed, it showed on the field how they, uh, how they prepared, and that's what's most important. Where the physicality was was so evident, so obvious. You hold the Pittsburgh Steelers to 51 yards on 15 carries. That's a, that's a good start for other good things to happen, isn't it? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, again, it always starts and ends with that. If we can make them one-dimensional, um, it'll be the same way the rest of the way. And, uh, and we're, we were uh, on it from the jump. They tried to get 22 going, and, you know, the offense gets on top. And, you know, now all of a sudden they can't run it. And uh, because of just the score, so it all works together. But the, the the guys certainly came out with a physical mindset, and it showed. There's no question, and and uh, and you affected the quarterback as a result. Like you always say, you earn the right to rush the passer, and uh, because of your excellence at the line of scrimmage and the and the circumstances of the game, as you mentioned, with the score being the way it was, you guys earned the right to rush the passer, and you really you affected Ben. There's no doubt about it. I mean. Uh, Pittsburgh turned the ball over three times. Ben had a couple of interceptions. Uh, anyway, um, but yeah, no, no doubt. Um, we, we, uh, you know, Trey and Sam and and the guys inside and all that, they know, you know, they know that, hey, we get a chance to tee off. We're gonna, uh, but, but it all starts on, you know, at the line start, you know, with the, with the run game and allow, and as you said, just allowing and give them a chance to rush. So, you know, they've all bought into that, and that's that's it's not just us. That's the way it is around the league, you know. But we've uh, we've done a good job so far. 
I thought your uh, your coverage in the secondary um, was outstanding again. I, since the bye week, you've you've put a couple of back to back performances defensively together that are you know that anybody would be proud of and envious of as such. Mm-hmm. W- w- what do you think it is, Coach? What was it? Just having the bye week to kind of refocus a little bit and, and go back to things that hey, this is important. This is important. That's important. Yeah, I, I think that to me, uh, that certainly helped. It came at a good time. Guys got rested up and, uh, you know, we went on, a, you know, a long stretch there from training camp all the way through. You know, you don't, people only count the games but don't realize that they were going since July 27th or whatever, you know, before we got the break. So it's it's uh, quite a bit of time. But uh, so I think that that came at the right time. And then, uh, you know, we look at the whole body of work. You know, you look at we've played 11 games now and, um, you know, uh, we feel like, you know, we want to be perfect every game, knowing that there's no perfect game or perfect players. Uh, you know, we're just glad that we're on a roll now and build on the momentum that we have. But, uh, you know, we, we've, we've, we've um, you know, put some really good tape on in the first half of the year. Uh, it certainly started here with the second half, so we got to keep it going. So let's uh, let's turn the page from the, uh, the Pittsburgh Steeler game, although I guess the <laughs> – the final comment is you sweep the Pittsburgh Steelers and you beat them twice by uh, two scores and the second time by more than two scores. Um, so that, that's that's pretty pretty phenomenal. And you're three and one in the division. You you put yourself in a position uh, that you know you wanted to be in three and one in the division, seven and four. You control your own destiny. Uh, if the playoffs were to start tomorrow, you'd be the first wild card team. Did you foresee that? Did you guys, as a staff, when you were projecting what you might have, and and I know it, it, it's easy to say, you know, after the fact, but did you guys think we might be a pretty good football team this year? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that um, you know, just again, the makeup of the guys, even all the way back to the spring, I, I felt like you know, we we had a Zach and organization had a theme of you know bringing in players that had come from winning organizations and drafting guys that. Uh, or along those lines with leadership abilities and coming from winning programs. And, you know, obviously they got to be good players. That's, that's the number one requirement, but uh, that other stuff and then just building it up that way. And, and um, you know, so far so good this year, but you know, it'll, it'll come down to these final uh, six games. Yeah. I mean, 12 of the 16 teams are 500 or better, including this week's in the AFC, including this week's opponent, the Los Angeles chargers, the fact that you had Justin Herbert at the Senior Bowl, you were, you know, part of the Bengal staff that, that coached the Senior Bowl that week, <coughs> and you saw firsthand, up close and personal, what he can and can't do. Is that a plus or is that overrated, or how do you no. look at that? No, I think it helps. I, I just, you just, it won't be the first time we've seen him throw it. You know, we know how well he can throw it. We can tell that to the players. You know, we we know how mobile he is. We've seen it. Um, it's not just off the tape. So, hey, oh, by the way, guys, you know, we've witnessed the arm strength. We've witnessed the athleticism. We know how smart the kid is. So, um, you know, it's 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 something that we've seen up up close and personal. And, um, you know, will it be, give us an advantage? I don't think so. It just But it just hammers home what the players are seeing on tape. When you look at it uh, offensively, they certainly have weapons. I mean, Keenan Allen seems to be good for 100 catches and 1,200 yards or whatever every single uh, year, and he's he's cranking along just like he always does. Uh, Mike Williams is a, is a big target at the receiver position as well, and I, I really I have a lot of respect for Eckler. I mean, he's got 14 touchdowns, seven on the ground, seven in the air. He's got over 50 catches, and he's got a combined – what, 1,100 yards uh, of scrimmage yards, I think, in the top three in the National Football League. These, they got some weapons, don't they? No, no doubt. And, um, you know, they're, they're, as you said, you know, I remember our first game last year against them. We, we were, you know, high, high respect for these guys. And as you mentioned, all of, all of the names above, you know, uh, Keenan Allen being one of the premier receivers in our league, Mike Williams as well. Uh, they've added, you know, the tight ends. Now you can throw in that mix and, um, you know, with Cook and, um, you know, the, the the number of the other guys that they have and, you know, just big targets there. And then, you know, Austin Eckler being one of the top dual threat backs that you have, you know, both out of the backfield running routes as, as well as a running back. They're, they're a very, very good football team. What about the – what about the scheme, Coach? Uh, is is the scheme a, a difficult thing to uh, – how, how multiple, how diverse are they schematically? No, they present a, they present a bunch of different looks. And, uh, 
they they play to the strength of the quarterback and their skill guys and um, you know so they they are definitely multiple uh, use different personnel groupings and uh, give you a lot to prepare for so um, you know we'll have our hands full. They have a uh, a rookie first round left tackle that I liked coming out of college. Slater is he is he playing pretty well? He is. Yeah, we we have high regard for him, uh, and uh, we feel like he's playing you know at a at a high level. So uh, good player for sure. So, so when you look at uh, you look at a game like this against the Chargers, obviously, as good as the quarterback is, uh, the bottom line is making them one dimensional, right? I mean, if, if if he's throwing it because he has to, not because he wants to, it's a whole different dynamic for you, isn't it? Oh, no doubt, uh, no doubt. If we can, you know, jump out on on him uh, somehow, some way, you know, and and uh, you get a lead, I think uh, you know, it allows you to call the game differently uh it'll, allow, it, it'll force them to do some things that you know they don't want to do potentially but uh you know we'll have to uh we'll have to get in that spot but uh you know if we do our guys are comfortable playing that way and and uh, showing that we can be successful that way and and herbert uh he's the second leading rusher on the team he's got a 36 yard carry uh his longest carry of the season he's averaging almost six yards uh a, a run he's He's a big kid, but he runs like what four six or better, doesn't he? I mean, he can pick him up and put him down, right? Yeah, he's he's a threat to get out uh, once there's something not there in the pass game. Uh, nobody is Lamar Jackson, nobody except Lamar. Right. Uh, but this guy can, you know, if it's not there and he doesn't see it, he can hurt you with his legs. He, you know, he had uh, ninety plus yards against Pittsburgh, and a majority of it was on scrambling. So. Mm. We have to be well aware of having a great pocket against this guy and not giving him any lanes that, hey, if the initial throw's not there, where he can just take off and run because he's capable of hurting you. Coach, talk about the uh, the chemistry that your that your defensive football team has, players and and, and coaches. I mean, it, it just seems like the coaches, there's tremendous chemistry amongst the coaches, tremendous chemistry amongst the players, and then coach to player, player to coach as well. I mean, everybody's got each other's back. It seems like to me when I when I watch and observe this football team, it it, it you know, and people like ah, you know, that's trite, that's whatever. But it's real though, isn't it? No, I think so because you know this game's hard enough, and and um, if you've got infighting and you know you're not seeing things eye to eye, uh, both in the staff room or when you're communicating what we want to the players, if it's not crystal clear, and you know. Um, then you, you're really putting yourself behind the eight ball. And, you know, our coaches do a great job of communicating. And when the players have a question, they ask. And uh, um, it's you would take that stuff for granted. But, you know, uh, it's not always that way. So to your point, I think it's um, it's it's really good. It's, uh, you know, it's good as it's been. And we got to keep it keep it uh, moving in that direction. Do you notice that um... – that, that the players now are at a point. I remember the Super Bowl uh, participant team that I played, and we didn't win the thing, unfortunately, but we got we won AFC championship team. Uh, we had the doctor of defense. Hank Buller was our defensive coordinator. And I remember the defensive players would be like, man, I can't wait to see what Hank's got cooked up this week. You know, what? can't wait for the game plan. I mean, everybody could not wait to get into the building. You know, you'd have a day off and it's like, man, what do we got? What, everybody, let, let's let's get after this right away. Um, and and uh, and then in the '88 team with Dick LeBeau as a defense quarter it was the same thing. Man, what's LeBeau get going on this time? Do you do you sense that? Do you think your guys are at? The, they're like, oh, yeah. man, Luke cooked up. What do we have for this so, game? Yeah, the guys are dying to see me every Wednesday. I, I can just imagine. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I don't know uh, what what their approach is. I, I do know this, right? So that every Tuesday is a player day off. We have guys in here that are asking for the game plans down, having their own meetings. Wow. Uh, individually, I know this on Friday, uh, we walk off the field at noon, whatever time it is, and all of the defensive players go into a meeting that I make a, a, a script tape for and put some calls on it, but they run the meeting. So, wow. you know, there's there's things where these guys have taken ownership, and I think that any uh, great team that I've been around, those are the traits that you have when the players take ownership and um, – you know, they're doing things like I've just mentioned. Uh, it just adds on top of, hey, this is how, how much they're buying in, <clears throat> excuse me, and how invested they are into the process. 
Yeah, that's that's when you you really got uh, you really got something something cooking in, in a very positive way. I, I think the the Eli Apple uh, scenario is a little bit fascinating. It, it, to me, it shows it shows how connected and close this football team is. You know, he was he had a little stretch where he he was unduly criticized for some things, and uh, he never he never pointed any fingers at anybody else. He took it all. Other guys came to his defense supported him including you and his teammates saying you know it's not just Eli and you guys everybody had the, their back now he's responded back to back games with big interceptions and and one of them he almost took to the house how 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 much of a, a good feeling does it give you as a coach to see that unfold and uh and transpire the way it did no it's great I mean I, I just think that um you know so happy with uh where he's at how he's playing how he's practicing how he's preparing um he plays, uh, you know, a very, very difficult position in our league, you know, where all the rules are against you. You can't touch anybody. You don't know where the guy's going. And, you know, those get those are uh, those corners. Now, everybody sees when they make an error. Nobody rarely sees when the three technique falls out of their gap or gets knocked down. And, um, right. you know, nobody sees that except us. You know, on the replay or, on yep. Sunday, you know, Monday morning, everybody sees when the corner makes an error. So you got to be thick skinned out there. You've got to be ready to handle the adversity because they're going to catch balls. That's this league the, these days. Uh, but, you know, they can't be for big plays. They can't be for explosives. And um, so I think he's handled everything the right way. And I'm happy that uh, success is coming his way and our way. When, when you um, have a, a group that is, taking ownership like you described where these guys are conducting additional meetings on their own to make sure that every I is dotted, every T is crossed. Um, when they, when they come off the football field, do they basically already say, coach, I know, I know what happened. I know what they did. I, are they giving you the kind of feedback that you're like, okay, well, we're still good. Everything's good now. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, there's, there's, um, and, and we're, as I said, we're problem solvers on game day from the players. You know, hey, coach, what about this? What about that? What do you think? Is, will this help? Um, they're, they're positive suggestions or, hey, guys, we're going to do this now. We haven't practiced it all week, but they know, oh, all right, that's easy. You know, so we're at that point in the season where we don't necessarily have to have a particular defense in and in the initial game plan, but our our inventory of things that we've been practicing since July, we can go to and call something and they, they won't flinch because they know exactly what to do. So it's, it's, it just makes it that much easier as a play caller. Well, coach, it's all about the game is uh, kept. We've talked about it a few times. The game is determined by a scoreboard. They keep yeah. score and uh, you're sixth in the national football league and fewest points allowed. You're fourth in the National Football League, giving up only 25 touchdowns. Nine of those on the grounds tied for seventh. 14 by air is tied for second fewest. That's the bottom line. You got your team playing at a very high level, Coach. Congratulations and good luck against uh, this Los Angeles Chargers offensive football team. And finish strong. I know it's a week-by-week -week thing, but uh, get another get another W under the belt and put together a good game plan today, sir. Yeah, that's the goal. Thanks for having me. As always, Lap, appreciate it. Appreciate you very much, sir. All right, guys. See ya. At First Star Logistics, we're a very strict company that really puts the pressure on our employees. <laughs> Brakes? What are those? That's what I'm talking about, Icky. Get the body right, then the mind's right. You know, yeah. you know you gotta get that body right. That's right. right. Yes, sir. <laughs> Become a star with a chance to earn the highest commission percentages in the industry as a freight broker agent. Check out firststarlogistics.com.